this lecture, we will go through the roof and walls design by climatic zone. Decisions about shape, color and composition of the roof and the walls of a building are crucial because they determine its overall performance. Roof design in single-story buildings is especially critical, while the decisions about the walls are equally critical in both low- and high-rise buildings. The roof is the part of a building that receives the greatest solar radiation. Thermal performance depends to a great extent on its shape, its construction and the materials used. The most widespread types of roof are flat roof, mono-pitched roof, double pitched roof, hipped roof, vault and dome. The flat roof is practical in areas with limited rain. It is also a good reflector and re-radiates heat efficiently. Pitched and hipped roofs are most common in hot humid climates, having the capability to drain rainwater and to provide shade to the walls. Curved roofs are suitable for areas with intense total solar radiation and low diffuse radiation, for example, hot arid regions. The first key element for roof is a highly reflective surface to minimize the amount of solar energy absorbed. Polished metal sheets and light colored finishes are the most common technological solution. More advanced and so-called cool roofs are also available on the market. The most suitable material for the upper roof layer is aluminium sheeting. However, this material has some drawbacks, such as the glare from dazzling sunlight and the noise from rain, wind or other materials striking it. In addition, condensation may occur because of its cooling down during the night through re-radiation. In ventilated double skin roofs, the heat between the two skins is removed by the airflow crossing the roof space through openings facing the prevailing winds. The outlet opening should be larger than the opening for the inlet. They should also be placed at different heights in order to obtain air movement by the stack effect when the wind is not blowing. The heat load is reduced by ventilation in the daytime and rapid cooling is allowed at night. In ventilated roofs, like these in the figure, slopes should be oriented towards the prevailing breeze. In both types of ventilated roofs, any element which would interrupt the airflow next to the surface of the roof should be avoided. In the figure, some solutions for roof ventilation are shown. The ventilation outlet can have different designs and should be possibly equipped with grating to protect the cavity. A reflecting surface in the cavity is highly recommended since it reduces the radiant heat transfer by reflecting the long wave radiation emitted by the hot upper layer. This foil, called a radiant barrier, should be applied to the inner surface of the roof. In this way, radiant heat is prevented and the convective heat is removed by ventilation. A simple and effective solution in a hot, humid condition is a flat roof shaded by an aluminium screen. The performance of the screen can be improved if the lower surface is covered with a low emission layer or the upper surface of the flat roof is covered with a reflective layer. Another appropriate solution is a sloping roof with a wall shading overhangs and a well-ventilated space between a roof and ceiling provided that the ceiling is massive, for example, a concrete layer with a minimum of 10-15 cm thickness covered with 5 cm insulation. If, instead of aluminium, galvanized corrugated sheets are used, insulation thickness has to be increased by at least 3 cm. In both cases, reflective surface on the insulation layer or in the lower surface of the roof would improve the performance. The flat roof is practical in areas where it seldom rains. It is also a good reflector and re-radiates heat efficiently, especially if it is made of a solid, white painted material. High and solid parapet walls along the edge of the roof can provide daytime shade and privacy, but can also have a disadvantage of creating an undesired stagnant pool of hot air. Therefore, the construction and placement of parapet walls should be carefully evaluated. 
The performance of a flat roof can be improved by separating roof and ceiling with a ventilated cavity. If this technique is used, the material of the roof should be light and the ceiling material should be massive. Aluminium foil between the cavities is recommended. As regards to building walls, the thickness and the material can be varied to control heat gain. The resistance to heat flow through the exposed walls might be increased in the following ways. Increase the thickness of the wall. Adopt cavity wall construction. Use walls made of suitable heat insulating materials. Fix heat insulating material on the inside or outside of the exposed wall. Use radiant barriers. Apply light colored whitewash on the exposed side of the wall. An efficient, although expensive, solution to the problem of reducing radiant heat is a ventilated and reflected outer skin. Heat dissipation at night is more efficient than with a structure using outside insulation. A way of reducing the radiant heat transfer between the two skins is to use a low emission surface on the inside of the outer skin, thus realizing a radiant barrier. Bright aluminum foil can be used. As regards to solar protection, east and west facing walls especially should be shaded or protected by reflective surfaces, for example by pergolas, loofs or vegetation. Another important topic to pay attention to is the thermal mass of the construction. The thermal mass influences the amount of excess heat accumulating during the day, for example solar radiation, which is stored in the mass and then released during the night.